We are very honored today to have two fabulous ladies with us from Aldean ISD. We have Ms. Selena Chapa, she is the Director of Human Resources from Aldean ISD. And we have Ms. Gloria Tomasos, the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. They are fabulous uh, women who have lots of good information. I want you to listen carefully to everything they have to say because they hire lots and lots of teachers and they know what they're looking for. Okay, so enjoy the presentation and contact me if you need anything. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, how is everyone today? Good morning. Good morning. Well, uh, I'm Selena Chuck. I'm one of the directors in HR. Our district has multiple directors, and I specialize particularly in the area of elementary, uh, element for elementary campuses that students staff. Ms. Cavazos, uh, both she and I have served um, in multiple capacities. We've been teachers, assistant principals, principals. I, I'm a director in HR, and now she's the assistant superintendent in HR. So we're here to share with you some things, some trends that we that we notice, and also to share with you some things that are important for you to consider as you're preparing for the interviews. Now the fabulous part about being here today is that we're able to really get in depth as far as some things for you to, 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 to consider. Uh, in other situations, we may not be able to go and, and provide you with as much detail so I certainly encourage you that if you have any questions at any time, please let us know because we want to make sure that when you leave, you have all the information necessary so that you are well prepared when you start that interview process. Now, you're halfway done, right? How exciting is that? How exciting. I could hear, I could feel the energy when you were out there. And it is exciting. The other exciting news is that we are anticipating openings. Yay, yay, oh yes, that is very exciting. Because we couldn't say that last semester, which you know was a little more challenging. So we are looking at, at uh, making some, some uh, decisions about the hiring process in multiple grade levels. We'd like to start first by asking you, we, we want to see who's in the room. So let's start with secondary, how many, do we have any secondary, um, secondary individuals? Okay. Uh, well, we want to go with high school. Let's go high school. I'm going to kind of filter down. Anyone from high school? Okay. How about from uh, the, a middle school setting? Okay. Good. Generalists? Okay. And that would be perfect. Okay. So we kind of understand. How. Do we have any uh, in here that are ESL certified? That will be ESL certified? Yeah, okay. And, and how about just solely bilingual? Both, yeah, yeah. Actually, if you're bilingual, you can actually teach all three. Yes, yes. So great, okay. Wonderful. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Please feel free to jot down any notes, and this will be available for you. So if you need to refresh or you want to go back and, and just obtain clarification, please feel free to do so. So we start off with the interview process, and we want you to know that there are multiple things that could possibly happen. You could A, have, oh, be limited to only one interview. You could have two, you could have as many as three, even more than that. And what we're gonna share with you is really um, about each part of the process that you could possibly encounter, but we can't emphasize enough that wherever you choose to interview, we certainly hope that you're not limiting yourself to only one district or one school because that really narrows your opportunities. When you do so, you need to make sure that you understand the process that each district follows, most of which you can find on the internet. So there are certain things that are considered when you talk about the interview. Is it the location? So where is it going to be held? It could be held at a job fair. We've seen those things happen. It could be held in the HR building, in one of the offices with a director or um, an interviewer. It could be held at the campus level. So there are different things that could possibly happen, and we're gonna share that with you today. Now, know that the process that we have in place now, and I, when I say we, I'm speaking in general terms, because most of the districts are doing this. What we have is a little more rigorous than what we've had in the past. So it's not only limited to having the applicant uh, demonstrate the ability to effectively communicate what they're able to do. There is another component that they're looking at that 
that we as a district are looking at in order for us to make better decisions, more informed decisions on what you are able to do with our students and how you're going to be a benefit in our district. So with that said, there's also something that we call, you have to demonstrate how your level of proficiency through a delivery of a lesson. What do you think that means? If you're thinking you have a delivery of lesson, of, 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 of what, what would that be? A video. You could do a video. You could do what? Model yourself teaching. That's exactly right. So it's not only being able to verbalize, this is what I'm able to do, but they're also going to want to see it in action. Okay? So whether it's a video, whether it's modeling. Now, it sounds a little bit more intimidating, but that's where we're at our best, because that's what we do. That's what we've been prepared to do. Okay? So I'm also going to share a little bit about some techniques that you can use to kind of get you prepared for that part. You're at a perfect, perfect point to get that taken care of now. Okay, well, how many of you have heard the term highly qualified? I really, everybody's hands should be up, right? Everyone's hands. What does highly qualified mean? We're highly qualified to teach. You're certified? and that you're in the grade or content area of certification, okay? Right. Being highly qualified is not enough, okay? Those are minimal standards. What districts are looking for are individuals that are high quality teachers, ready to come in and work with the students with their friends. And that's really two different things. Being highly qualified, fantastic. I passed my test, I graduated, I am ready to go teach. That doesn't guarantee anyone a position. Being a high quality educator, however, does. And so those are the things that, that are gonna that are gonna make a difference when you're out there interviewing. So you have to stop before you do anything else and have some self-reflection. Because you have to be really honest with yourself. Where am I? What have I done at different levels? And what is it that I need to continue doing to continue to grow? Because I'll share with you, it is an expectation. I have 25 years in, the, in, in, in our profession. Okay? Continue to seek out professional development. Continue to grow. That is ongoing and never ends. So with that said, have you asked yourself, why do you want to be a teacher? Now you know why you want to be a teacher. Some of us knew since we were what? Second grade, right? Okay. So, but what are your skill sets? What do you, What are your strengths? What are some opportunities for improvement? And no one can answer that but you. How have you developed your skills? And that wouldn't be limited to only what's given in the provided for in the universities. What have you done beyond that? To look for research, to go out and look seek best practices. Have a collaborative effort among peers. Very important. What are some things that you can do? And how have you supplemented what the university provides? Now you're lucky because you have done, you have received a high quality education. But as I stated earlier, we continue to grow. So what have you done to help support what you've been providing? It should serve as a springboard. So. As we start off with the, with the process, I shared earlier that there could be multiple multiple levels of interview. For the purpose of today's presentation, we categorize those into three different areas. The first one being the initial interview. The second one, I, I labeled it as, as a principal panel interview. <coughs> you may have heard it uh, called a panel <coughs> interview. This is basically where you model your lessons. Okay, you have a group of educators that are sitting and evaluating that. And then the campus interviews. So what we'll do today is really talk about each component and what, what, what it entails and what you can 